right. We worked this problem in class. I've worked it a bunch of other times, which I'll post out again tonight. We're going to rework it and invent it in a number of different ways, but learning to first and foremost draft it to scale. This is actually to scale within PowerPoint. Lay out all of your knowns, if you would. Come up with a coordinate system, basically here, right? Calling that your zero, zero, right, is going to be important stuff. So learning how to read and make some light of something that's written as well as a picture. So I'm going to read this out. Given a beam inclined at a 512 pitch, 26 feet long, and subject to a point load of 500 pounds down, located at a distance 10 feet right of the left support, can you calculate the reactions? We are really heading beyond the reactions very soon, but I'm going to take this time to send you back a little bit to think about what else you're supposed to be getting out of this class or many classes and that is the ability to kind of pull back your algebra, your trig, your geometry and use it to some productive means. So my first question on this as I will be showing you and have shown you over time how to do this purely in AutoCAD or SketchUp with force times distance is can you do these? Can you write the equation for the line of force for this line? Can you write the equation of the line that goes up and down through this force here? Can you write, write, write the, re, uh, the equation for the reaction line at B? What is that line? Not the line segment, but the what is the line, the equation of the line? Can you do it for this line here? And can you write the equation for the line there? I know that all of you can. Can you write the unit vector that describes this direction? Can you write the unit vector that describes this vector? Can you write the unit vector that describes this vector or this vector? So these are, and then finally, can you write the unit vector that describes the vector that is the beam? So these are all things that you might want to consider as we go forward here of solidifying some skills that you might have had or have that are disconnected from problems like this because these forces eventually cause moments and you get into second third and fourth order curves which aren't lines so if you don't kind of grasp the line stuff you won't necessarily grasp and apply the rest of it all right if not work hard to figure out a way as well as going back to the algebra to do problems graphically and work very hard also to realize that you're going to learn use a lot of different tools here to calculate a radial vector and a force vector a radial vector and a force vector and in fact you're going to learn eventually that it's really what you're doing is you're making sure that this area is equal to and opposite this area on a problem like this so that is this calculation of this area is the same calculation as force times orthogonal distance and force times orthogonal distance. Those numbers work out to be the same. So perhaps you need to convince yourself of that by doing it a little bit in CAD and in algebra. So in this problem, as we worked in class, if you assume the coordinates in 0, 0 are 0, 0 at point A, they're really zero, 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 as we see as we start bringing this and modeling this in solid modelers like Revit or Inventor. Then the coordinates of B are 24, 10. And then the coordinates of this are 10, 4.17. If you can't go through and lay, lay all those things out, figure out why, and then get awfully good at doing drafting. The equation for the line of force here is x equals 10. This is 10 foot over. It's going straight up and down. It's a vertical line. The equation for this is, for the reaction force in this direction, if you think, that equation there is y x equals 0. And this, the equation of this line is y equals 0. And if you remember, for the equation of this line here, we use the equation y point slope minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 
with the ones being the knowns and the x being the general y or x. And remembering that if this slope here is 5 12, then this slope here is minus 12 fifths. And so we wrote out this equation based on the point slope form for there, y minus 10, because the y is 10, equals minus 12 fifths times x minus 24, because the x is 24. That may seem esoteric, but these writing these lines in the algebraic format means you'll be able to use hopefully your skills but also programs to figure out where the heck are these intersection points that you can sometimes just get graphically so try to do that on a couple of problems this is not just a fascination this is an application and as we get into these tools, we're going to want at least work that we're going to be trying to truth some of these models that we have and not just take everything as a given. So algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and eventually calculus are all encompassed in efficient graphic solutions. I want to finish this out and post it out so some of you can look at it in class because you might not be looking at things otherwise. You might, you might not. Kind of hard to tell sometimes. All right, so I'm going to finally go here. Remember in the end that this problem, as given, is a concurrent force problem because there are three forces. And so in effect, you could have solved this problem by saying, well... There's a force 500 down, and I have a line of force here, and I have another line of, you have a line of force here, another line of force here, and you know based on these, this kind of general direction, you know this line of force this way, and so you could have ended up with the solution that way by doing the graphics. So once you know these lines of force and you know one of them, you can solve for the other two. And so I'll work that one pretty quickly in class. Once you calculate what is the equation of A up to there, right? you know these directions and so you can solve it by a three force concurrent force problem. Thanks for listening. And we'll continue to work that problem over and over again in different formats because it is not very different if you would believe me or not very, not very different from this problem I've shown you before with a pin joint and a roller joint with 15 out here and then what is the reaction here based on a what more or less ratio of the moment arms